IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from Budapest here in the Carpathian Basin. I hope everybody is having a good weekend, staying productive, staying happy, staying healthy. In this class, everyone, we are looking at speaking part three, the last part of the speaking interview following part two. Hi, Ashraf. Hi, Moni. Hi, Jainiel. Nice to see our members. Hello, everyone. Hi, Tonwi C. Gaurav. Shaik. Good to see our regular students. Everyone, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there for general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of help for you, including HD videos, fully interactive courses, and loads, loads more. I'll show you that real quick because we have free speaking with other students here as well. So this is the general IELTS website at gieltshelp.com. You click that big red button to join and the academic one looks like this with the blue background you click that red button uh, to join the premium package there let me show you where you can practice your speaking for free with other students kind of like skype or a whatsapp so when you click on this uh, my student account up at the top here uh, then uh, you get access to our computer-based practice exams, videos, audio CDs, lots more. And then on the right side, you will find this uh, student partner speaking. When you click on that, it will ask you to accept our terms. Basically that you're going to be very nice with other students. And then you get into this page here and in this page you'll see other users online so it basically says users online and there's Monica there's Rashika uh, Pankti Dimitri uh, Akansha Lokesh Yug and um, there's usually at least uh, five ten students in here waiting for other people to ping them and uh, then practice their speaking and of course we have speaking questions uh, that you can link to here as well. Okay. Ilyas says, I got nine for my speaking. Good job, Ilyas. I'm so happy about that. Ilyas, can you send me an email? I would love to hear your feedback about your speaking experience. It's awesome that you got nine. That's fantastic. Okay. So, uh, and you have the same, of course, in the general IELTS as well. All right. Uh, let me brighten up our day here. Again, a little bit. There we go. Uh, so, uh, here we are. So, again, uh, absolutely free. You can uh, use that service, find other students, and talk to them. Okay. Uh, Ilias, that's great. So, you used a lot of the strategies, I'm guessing, from the class. And Tahir got 8.5 in reading. Fantastic. I'm so happy to see many of our students getting these uh, really nice high uh, band scores. That's fantastic. Of course, it's uh, proof that uh, what we're teaching is working, and that's great. I'm so happy about that. Okay, everyone. So, again, if you have questions about the IELTS or the exam, um, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will uh, gladly respond to your inquiries. If you want to get our exams uh, in paper, hard copy version. You can get them from Amazon on Kindle uh, and uh, you can order them to your house. Search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. All right. I'm really happy when students, by the way, come back and share their success stories in the chat. Um, it makes me feel good, but aside from that, it also uh, helps your fellow peers to know that um, you can succeed in the IELTS and these high band scores like band 8 and 9 are not impossible. Okay, so definitely come back and share your success stories with us and your IELTS stories with us in the chat. Okay, all right everyone, so today uh, speaking part 3, continuing from the class we just finished, speaking part 2. And then as usual, no classes on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, so those three days, there's no live class, but of course, you can see lots of classes on the YouTube channel. And then I am back on the 19th. 
at this same time uh, with speaking part one. Okay. All right. And so uh, many of you, I think, were in the class that we just finished 30 minutes ago that was speaking part two. Um, what was the topic there? Can uh, somebody remind us all of uh, what was the speaking part two question topic? What did we talk about? Because that's very useful for your speaking part three. So <laughs> thanks, Ashraf. Uh, Bekjan says it's a great place for learning. Yeah, very good. And Bekjan, what were we talking about? So topic was a great place for learning. And uh, what did we talk about exactly? Yeah, so it was a learning place. That's right, Parmar. Yep, Alex, place where we can learn. And what was the place that we talked about? Uh, Saki Bo says it was a library. More specifically, it was the London Central Library. Okay, sure. All right, now, uh, when the examiner says, uh, okay, that's the end of part two, I'm going to take back the card, the pen, uh, the note paper, and now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will um, ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, so you remember, okay, yeah, all right, good. So I talked about a library. I feel good about that. I talked about the London Central Library. It was a great suggestion, Carolina. You had me convinced, Carolina, that London Tint Library exists. <laughs> so... Um, we also want to remember a little bit more. What else do we want to remember? And I said this to you last time we looked at speaking part two. So remember what? What else do you want to remember as the examiner goes into the part three uh, questions? Okay, so Siraj Alamani, pay attention here because this is going to help you. Yeah, Rajveer, very good. Okay, very good. Um, so Rajveer says, other such places which are good for learning that you thought about in step three. Okay, so step three. The other such places good for learning. Yeah, okay, very good because those will give you a lot of great ideas. So don't forget what your other choices, your other... Uh, candidates or possibilities were, right? Your other ideas. And then definitely connect, Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. So what were our other um, ideas? It was university, uh, University of Victoria. Remember your specific choices as well, right? So um, it was university. What else? Yeah, so Delhi Medical College, University of Vancouver, or university. It's actually University of British Columbia, whatever. University of Vancouver, uh, Delhi uh, Medical College, sure. Um, what else? What other ones? Because there were some other ones as well. Museums, right? More specifically, the Louvre Museum, right? We also thought about the Manchester uh, football academy so unfortunately you know you won't have your notes in front of you anymore but definitely you want to remember these okay you want to remember these all right okay good all right so keep these in mind okay now again remember we're focusing here on answer uh, explain explain and example okay all right so uh, let's get right into it students uh, give me some answers i'll give you feedback so um, the examiner now says okay uh, let's talk about educational establishments if you don't know the word establishments don't panic remember it's connected to part two so it has to do something with places or locations or buildings, okay? This is speaking, so make sure to speak and repeat, okay? So let's talk about educational establishment, establishments. Okay, good. So what are some places where people 
get formal education. All right, use the question, paraphrase, answer, explain, example. This is what you're focusing on. So Roshni says, well, in my perspective, there are a myriad of places for effective education, such as libraries that I mentioned. Apart from that, schools and museums are excellent places to be educated, such as universities. Okay, Roshni, um, from your answer, I feel that you don't have a clear idea of formal education. Okay. And if you do, you have to explain that. Okay. Saswati says, I would say schools and universities are the best places to gain formal education. In fact, um, recently, many online courses claim that they give students formal education as well. Okay, so Swati, good. This is why you want to use the object here in your response. By using formal education, Saswati, it's clear that you know what I'm talking about here, what I'm asking you. Carolina says, there are several locations where individuals can certify their studies, like universities, schools, and nowadays online platforms. I received my graphic design degree from Oxford University in 2008. Fantastic. Carolina, very nice answer. Um, explanation a little bit lacking, but good example. So good answer, good example, little bit vague on the explanation part, Carolina. So Focus on all three. Answer, explain, example. Flower Sun says, uh, school is the best place for most people to get formal education because most of the subjects included in these places, so it can introduce the base for students to know more about the study. Yeah, okay. All right. Not bad, Flower Sun. Not bad. I'm still looking for that perfect answer, explain, example. Hema says, well, the places where students get their primary education is at government schools. Hema, at least put the word government in there. Why? And give me an example. Okay. Ashraf says, there are many places where people can get good education, namely uh, schools and universities. This is where we get our formal education. Okay. Not bad, Ashraf. Still... Explanation, example, Mohammed Azat says, I think another place that is good for learning, like Manchester Football Academy, is a big facility for young players to learn the basics of soccer. All right. CB says, I think state-affiliated universities are where people can get formal education, like Mumbai University. CB, nice answer, nice example, missing the explanation. CB, take out the U. Okay, students, avoid the words you, avoid the words things, okay? So the most common institutions where people receive structured and certified education are public schools and universities where they learn in classrooms from trained teachers and professionally developed curriculum. Of course, they get formally tested with standardized exams and this proves their knowledge. I went to Vic High and the University of Victoria which would be to such establishments. All right. So answer, explain, example, pushing you for band nine and beyond, okay? My goal is for you to not just score great on the IELTS, but to be an 
absolutely amazing communicator in all parts of life. So I'm really pushing you. I know sometimes it seems tricky, but I also know that you can do it. I've seen many, many students uh, surpass even band nine on the IELTS. All right, so here we go. Repeat after me. What are some places where people get formal education? The most common institutions where people receive structured and certified education are public schools and universities where they learn in classrooms from trained teachers and professionally developed curriculum or curricula. Of course, they get formally tested with standardized exams and this proves their knowledge. I went to Vic High and the University of Victoria, which would be two such establishments. Okay, now you're thinking, well, all right, Adrian, that's quite complex, it's challenging to do, and fair enough, um, that's fine. You don't have to use the same vocabulary. The goal is to use the same information flow. Answer, explain, example. You can simplify it. Um, people get formal education from public schools and universities because they learn from teachers, they have tests, and they get report cards or they get official scores. I went to elementary school, middle school in uh, New Delhi and then got my degree from the University of New Delhi. These would be examples. So I can simplify it. It's just the flow that's important. Okay. All right. Ashraf is asking, what is the max that we should give for each question in part three? There really is no maximum and minimum words, Ashraf. The goal is to answer clearly. And a clear answer, again, means that you answer, explain, example. Don't go off topic. Usually, Ashraf, if I have to quantify, like if you want me to give you a number of words or characters, it's roughly about how much you can fit into one or two full comments in the chat, which is about 300 characters. It's about, say, 40 to 60 words max, something like that, three to five sentences, okay, if I want to be very specific, all right? Okay, try it, so here, um, we have kind of, not the opposite, but contrasting question, all right? So where can people gain informal education? Informal education, okay? Uh, Lydia says, informal learning takes place wherever people have the need, motivation, or opportunity, such as museums and libraries. It can help people to um, pursue their interests without the stress of being tested. Therefore, I used to go to Zayed Central Library twice a week to enhance my reading skills by reading various sci-fi books and William Shakespeare. Very good, Lydia. That's good. All right. Answer, explain, example. It's good. And notice, Ashraf, how Lydia used two um, spaces for that answer, which was really good. All right. Darshan says, today, all of the world faces a COVID-19 situation. Nevertheless, many online classes and websites provide a little bit of courses like uh, Udemy and LinkedIn. Um, okay, so Udemy and LinkedIn are two online locations where people can get informal education. The rest of it is off topic, okay? So try to be more on topic, Darshan, all right? Um, don't get lost in the COVID-19. It doesn't make too much sense to talk about that for this case, okay? All right, uh, Flower Sun says, to get informal education books, um, which mostly include topics that do not, that are not taught at school are useful. Therefore, some people buy books. Um, yeah, I mean, book is not a clear location. It's a source. But here we're looking more for location, okay? Virtual locations like online is even a little bit, you know, questionable. Um, think about, think about locations, places, okay? 
Carolina says, people can be self-learners searching information online or like I mentioned in part two in public libraries. I've improved my English um, for free with English lessons offered at the library. Okay, Carolina, remember there are no English lessons in the library. That's what they can improve. But uh, So don't contradict yourself, but otherwise you're on the right track. Okay, Pachu Yadav says, people gain informal educations at a gym, a sports facility, uh, through their friends at home. Uh, these are not fixed subjects or curriculum. Um, they are just open source knowledge according to the needs and interests of the people present. Very good, Pachu. I made some corrections there in real time, uh, so take note of that, but otherwise quite good. All right, Jainil says, nowadays individuals have a lot of options uh, to gain informal tuition like online platforms, YouTube, Baiju, and AE Health, uh, and additional learning establishments like libraries, music halls, and sports academies. Very nice, Jainil. Okay, very nice. All right, so there are a number of places, both virtual and physical, where individuals can acquire informal learning without the pressure of professors or examinations. Some that come to mind are YouTube and Udemy for online learning. And as I had mentioned in part two, a public library or a uh, sports club such as drop-in basketball that is held every Saturday evening at my local YMCA. All right, sure. So here we go. Repeat after me. Where can people gain informal education? There are a number of places, both virtual and physical, where individuals can acquire informal learning without the pressure of professors or examinations. Some that come to mind are YouTube and Udemy for online learning, as I had mentioned in part two, a public library or a sports club such as drop-in basketball that is held every Saturday evening at my local YMCA. Good. We're doing fantastic. Great job, students. Keep with it. Okay, keep pushing yourselves. Here we go. Next question. Have post-secondary places such as universities improved in the last few decades? Okay, so this is our next question. Give me a nice answer for this. Pay attention uh, to the grammar of the question as well, okay? All right. Seni Sarani says, it is improved. Seni, use the present perfect. The question's in present perfect, so use present perfect. Uh, they have improved. They allow students to take online classes at home uh, through the internet after working hours. Mm -hmm. So clearly tell me, Seni, how they have improved. You're indirectly telling me how they have improved. Uh, always be direct, students, with your answers. So as humans, we will often communicate indirectly through examples where our listener has to fill in the blanks. But on the IELTS, you will get a much better score, a much higher band score, if you directly answer the question. Okay. So Swati says, the way I see it, yes, they have. Saswati, so use the present perfect. The way I see it, 
Yes, they have. Universities have changed some of their courses from classroom to online learning uh, in light of the coronavirus. In fact, they have changed assignments as take-home assignments. All right, Carolina, very nice start. You're reflecting the present perfect right away, which is great. So Carolina says, yes, they have. Over the last half century, universities have gotten better not only due to the huge number of students, but also the competition among high level universities. Okay, good. All right. Those of you who reflect the present perfect will definitely score better for your grammatical range and accuracy. Okay. Uh, Margaret Davis says post-secondary places such as universities have improved in the last few decades. They have now adopted uh, to teach skills which are market relevant. Okay, can you give me an example of what you mean, Margaret? And then I can give you even more scores. Absolutely. Okay. Sibby says, as there are many improvements lately, like conducting online classes for part-time learners. All right. Um, more to it, Sibi. I guess I'm missing that, but that's a good addition. Zana Rashid says, yeah, I guess so. Educational institutions have increased uh, their capacities in the last decades. Uh, initially, there were a few universities, whereas nowadays we can see many such institutions, even in rural areas. Uh, Kyber, I will read yours, so write. Uh, you're not writing for me, Kyber. Uh, you're writing to learn. Remember that, everyone. Um, when you write your answers, if I read it, sure, that's great. If I don't, you're still learning, okay? So learning happens by doing first and then by feedback after. So Kyber, if I catch what you read or what you write, then I will read it. Had you written an answer, I would have read it there because I was looking at yours. Okay. Abdul Aziz says, obviously, I would say that it has improved much more than in the previous decades because humans have needed special courses that are related to their future jo jobs as well. They have been improved by government funding. Okay, sure. So let's talk about how they've improved, right? So think about the how, visualize it, all right? So definitely, I would confidently state that um, post-secondary secondary institutions such as universities have improved immensely in the last 20 to 30 years. They have advanced their facilities to not only cover a broader range of subjects such as computer sciences, but have also built state of the art research facilities to produce outstanding innovation. and future inventors. Okay, um, so there's my answer. Uh, again, think about how universities improve, right? So yeah, they get bigger, there are more buildings. Obviously, there are more research opportunities, more research facilities in the fields of engineering, medicine, mathematics. Um, and of course, all of those lead to new discoveries, new inventions. So uh, universities uh, have improved in many ways, and I could keep going. So improvement in teaching methodologies, virtual learning as well, as some of you have mentioned, okay? Don't keep talking forever, but definitely explain how, 
All right. So focus on the how. Uh, repeat after me. Have post-secondary places such as universities improved in the last few decades? Definitely. I would confidently state that post-secondary institutions such as universities have improved immensely in the last 20 to 30 years. They have advanced their facilities to not only cover a broader range of subjects, such as computer sciences, but have also built state-of-the-art research facilities to produce outstanding innovation and future inventors. Okay. All right. Uh, and then often comes this uh, follow-up question to such a question, which is, uh, can you elaborate? So can you give more information on what you mean? Okay. So can you elaborate? Nagay, you cannot get 9.5 in IELTS because there is no such score. <laughs> All right. Amanjad says, yes, sure. Nowadays, universities started giving scholarships not only to those who are from middle standard families, but also those who excel in exams. All right, Amanjad, you're elaborating. Sure. Uh, keep going with that. So Moni Grace is asking, how important is it to concentrate on the main idea of the question? Moni, it is extremely important important to get into the high band scores your answer has to focus on the main idea of the question if you go off topic you will lose scores for your most important component which is coherence okay if um, even if we talk perfectly in english if i'm talking about the moon and the stars when you're asking me about how to use the toilet in my home um, we're not going to get along very easily. <laughs> Somebody's going to get very upset at some point. Okay. So it's really important when we're communicating that we're talking about the same idea. So if we're talking about an apple, both of us needs to be talking about that apple and not somebody talking about a banana. Okay. It's very important. Don't go off topic. Roshni says, definitely. Institutions have changed not only in their infrastructure, but also their security systems for learners' convenience and staff, such as installing CCTV cameras so girls and staff feel safe while studying. Um, Roshni, it's a bit of an awkward uh, answer. So we're talking about learning, knowledge acquisition, and you're kind of switching the controlling idea to... Uh, safety, which is a bit awkward, I would say, in the in context. Okay. Uh, Peya Basak says, uh, of course, because of the availability of the internet in the pandemic situation, institutions are able to provide classes as well as assignments online, which is beyond imagination compared to 20 years back. Very good, Peya. Okay, that works well. So you're focusing on the topic and on the controlling idea. Uh, Mohammed says, yes, I can. Like now, uh, if, uh, during the corona uh, outbreak, my university made a lot of online classes by professional professors. Um, just say professors, Mohammed. That includes the idea of professional, uh, which helps students to finish the curriculum and review materials. Okay. Uh, Professional professors, it's uh, like repeating the same word, Mohammed. Uh, professors are professional. In fact, they're the highest level of professionals. Okay. All right. Uh, Beckjen says, yeah, sure. Every government uh, allocates a great deal of money to provide universities with the latest facilities. My Eurasian National University has recently acquired uh, 3D um, printers thanks to government budgeting. Very nice elaboration, Beck John. That's beautiful. Okay. Very visual, very accurate. Nicely done. All right. Um, yes, yeah, certainly. Um, most classrooms these days are equipped with interactive uh, projectors where 
students can both learn in the room or even at home through the internet. In addition to this, there are over 500 publicly accessible computers in an average university to enable learners to access the internet for research and projects. Okay, um, here we go. So can you elaborate? Yeah, certainly. Most classrooms these days are equipped with interactive projectors where students can both learn in the room or even at home through the internet. In addition to this, there are over 500 publicly accessible computers in an average university to enable learners to access the internet for research and projects. Uh, this was simply unheard of at the turn of the century. Okay, which would be back in 2000, all right? Well, some universities did, but again, truth does not matter, okay? All right, doing a good job. Let's keep practicing. Let's keep pushing forward. After this, you're going to have a couple of days to relax. Well, from my teachings anyway, hopefully you'll keep pushing forward with some other materials as well or keep looking at the videos on the channel. Um, here we go, another one. What are the benefits of learning in foreign schools? Okay, so again, remember that here the topic of part three is let's talk about uh, educational establishments. So there are a lot of different questions that we can come across in this uh, topic of educational establishments. And one of them would be, what are the benefits of learning in foreign schools? So give me a nice full sentence answer uh, for this one. Kyber says, well, I could confidently state that the advantage of learning in a foreign uh, center of learning must be improving language skills and experiencing different styles of teaching. Very good, Kyber. That's a good answer. Uh, try not to repeat the word learning there. It's a little bit awkward, Kyber. So while I could confidently state that the advantage of learning in foreign uh, centers of education uh, must be providing language skills and experiencing different styles of teaching. All right. Amanjot says, while well, taking education from foreign schools has immense advantages, starting with the quality of education to the flexible timing of classes. Hmm. Okay, good start, Amanjot. Can you more clearly explain that to me? Like, do you mean that um, class times are more flexible if you're studying in the UK than if you're studying in India. I'm not exactly sure where you're going with it. So I think there you'd need a little bit more explanation. Okay. Ashraf says, well, there are many advantages when it comes to studying at foreign schools. Namely, people get to learn the culture, meet many people, and also languages. Yeah, those are the most obvious, right? So uh, don't overcomplicate. Uh, Kavit says, studying out of country can contribute to a person in so many ways. Just from the top of my head, students can learn additional languages with less effort. Also, they can immerse themselves in another culture. Very good. Okay. Hema says, some of the demerits of studying overseas are homesickness. Uh, Hema, it's a little bit simple, and we're not at that question yet, okay? Uh, so don't jump ahead. Focus on the question that we're asking here. Um, Mansur said, I would certainly, Mansur Samadab says, I would certainly state that learning uh, foreign languages is one of the main benefits since it is much easier to learn vocabulary among international students. 
Mektub says learning abroad gives the opportunity to upgrade uh, oneself with the advancement of technology and better placement offers. Mektub, it's a little bit confusing. Um, so you want to express yourself a little bit clearer. Don't overcomplicate. All right. Uh, LePay says, thereby students are more likely to be open-minded, uh, have more tolerance, and be uh, more of a global citizen. LePay, that's an interesting answer. So um, some of the distinct advantages for learning abroad, such as getting a degree in a foreign university, or learning languages, cultures, and making international Friends, these all empower students to broaden their thinking and have more global perspectives, which in turn lead to uh, greater opportunities in work and life. All right. So here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, what are the benefits of learning in foreign schools? Some of the distinct advantages for learning abroad, such as getting a degree in a foreign university, are learning languages, cultures, and making international friends. These all empower students to broaden their thinking and have more global perspectives, which in turn lead to greater opportunities in work and life. All right. Good. Next question. Can there be any negatives? Give me a nice sentence for this one. Now, Hema, some of the disadvantages of studying overseas are potentially homesickness. Um, and um, since you're using plural demerits, you want to say at least two, Hema. So homesickness is one. You should state at least one more, okay? All right. Alex Joseph says, well, despite all the advantages, a student's um, home health insurance may not cover uh, injuries abroad. Not only these, but studies are expensive and they're going to miss their close ones like their childhood friends and relatives. Yeah, very good, Alex. Clever thinking, quick, clever thinking. Uh, finances, culture shock, those tend to be the biggest hurdles of studying abroad, especially when students are learning in uh, countries that are quite expensive like the UK. Okay, uh, Beck John says, yes, there are a few drawbacks which could be um, significant, such as expenditure and culture shock. Obviously, British universities cost thousands of dollars, not to mention the living costs uh, may double the tuition fee. Yeah, Beck John, easily. And in the U.S. and Canada, that's also true. All right. Okay. Nice answers, students. Nice answers. Hassan says, being far from home can increase students' stress and uh, put them out of their comfort zone, particularly when students have uh, deadlines and exams. 35% of international students feel depression and homesickness. Very nice, Hassan. Hassan, I really love your introduction of vocabulary here and also your use of quantitative language. 35% of international students feel depression or homesickness at some point during their studies abroad. Very nice use of quantitative language, Hassan. So, uh, yes, there are some clear uh, drawbacks that are common 
when learning abroad, such as homesickness and finances. Um, many foreign universities are quite expensive, ranging from monthly tuition, tuition and living costs of a thousand to three thousand US dollars. Also, um, it is shown that about 30% of all international students feel uh, depression during their studies away from friends and family. Yeah, let's put some quantitative information in there. Why not? Absolutely. So here we go. Uh, can there be any negatives? Uh, yes, there are some clear drawbacks that are common when learning abroad, such as homesickness and finances. Many foreign universities are quite expensive, ranging from monthly tuition and living costs of 1000 to 3000 US dollars. Also, it's shown that about 30% of all international students feel depression during their studies away from friends and family. Nice. Yeah, let's not forget about that quantitative language. Always think, quantify, give some numbers. That will make my communication much more clear, much clearer. Okay, everyone, here are three more uh, questions that you can practice on your own uh, for part three connected to part two. Let's talk about the learning environment. Which qualities are usually necessary for an effective learning environment? What happens when these are not available? And what can students do to optimize their learning environment? So those are good ones to think about, not just to practice for the IELTS, but also for um, yourself. What are... Uh, points to pay attention to to optimize your learning environment that's it for me for today for this week of live ielts classes everyone uh, to get lots more help with your speaking with your writing and with all sections of the ielts including practice exams computer-based paper-based uh, fully interactive courses videos check us out at aehelp.com for academic ielts and gieltshelp.com for general outs. Thank you so much, everyone, for being with me this week. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. You stay healthy and strong and productive. Much love back at you, Kyber, and to everybody else from the Carpathian Basin. I'm Adrian signing out for today, and I will be back on Wednesday at this same time. Bye-bye.